All right, so we are finally back on the LS Swap Mustang again here. Uh, what we're going to be working on today is the fuel system and then a couple other odds and ends. So what we've got here is we have got a uh, just a simple catch can here along with all the fittings to go on the engine. Uh, we've got a Deech work. This is a 300M, 340 liter per hour fuel pump to go in the tank along with the install kit to put it in this car. And then we also have a set of Deech works a 630 cc injectors and the associated harness to go with those uh, and we have HP tuners to tune all that so I'm probably gonna start first on getting the fuel pump put in uh, and then we'll move on to catch can injectors so let's get going on that alright so fuel pump we kinda went over uh, in one of the previous videos here uh, but it's under the back seat it's right here uh, we already adapted it back seat just pretty much just pulls right up out of here oh, I got to move this seat forward but uh, we adapted the old fuel pump system because Ford uses a returnless system and we added a return to it I'm gonna have to get a tool to get this off uh, as you can see that's the return that we had to mold this cap around um, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal to add this pump in we've already had this all apart so I'll get it pulled out and I will show you exactly how this pump goes in all right, so as you can see one of the easier pumps to get to on a car. Uh, don't have to drop the tank or do anything weird like that. You've got one plug here. That's your power and sending unit. Uh, this is the return we added. So we'll pull that off. And then this is the high pressure. Just a quick connect fitting. Pull that off. This ring. Screwdriver and a hammer. Spin it around. Don't put a hole in the tank with the screwdriver. There are some lines on the inside you got to disconnect. Because this is a saddle tank. It goes over to the other side. Uh, so get those lines disconnected. Don't bring anything. Take your time with it and it will all come out. Alright, so factory pump is out. Uh, what you got to do first is there's two little screws. One holds the sending unit on and a couple grounds. The other one's on the other side. Uh, pop this filter off the bottom. It's just pressed on. Then you take the two screws out. This comes off. This comes out. Unplug your electrical connector on the pump and then the top of the pump where the hose goes on has one of these metal crimp things cut that thing off uh, and you can very carefully pry the pump out of there so here is the stock pump so here's our detox pump next to the factory pump now this is a drop-in replacement pump so it is an identical copy size plugs connectors everything of the original pump that's what makes it super nice for this um, even the electrical connector is the same it even has this little rubber piece on it already which is on the old pump that holds it in the housing you reuse this, they give you a new sock filter to go on the bottom, so that's all good there. And then you just hook it all up. They even give you a small piece of rubber hose in the event that you break this one. Um, I was able to get this one off and it's still rubbery, which is amazing. So I'm going to put that one back on. So we'll get this pump put back in, do the same thing in reverse, and then it's ready to go back in the car. It's that easy. So there is the fuel sending unit put back together. Uh, ended up putting the stock filter back on because I didn't like the way the other one fit uh, This one's a lot bigger too, so I cleaned it out good stuck it back on Upgraded pump and it's ready to go back in so same thing in reverse again here Make sure you get that line put on down there in the tank Or you will have problems and we'll get this put back in and move on to the next thing fuel pump is in got the seat put back together uh, Cycled the key seems to be running fine building pressure uh, next thing we're going to be working on here is catch can. Um, there's a lot of space here for it. Um, well, let me get why. Let me get into why we are putting the catch can on first. So first of all, factory uh, PCV vent. One comes to the top here. One goes to the throttle body here. Go down to each valve cover. Uh, intake manifold is now pressurized because we're turbocharged. So we don't want to be pushing that pressure into the crankcase and leave it nowhere to go. Um, that's how you blow out seals, bad things are gonna happen. So uh, we've already actually used this top port, it goes to the boost gauge inside, and this hose is hooked to the valve cover, going to nothing. So it's gonna go to our catch can. Um, there's a lot of room here, but I don't wanna put it here because there's a lot of hot things here. So we have exhaust, we have turbo, we have hot heat. I don't wanna get lots of heat next to something that could possibly have oil in it. Um, it doesn't sound like the best idea. So I'm coming to this side far away from the heat as we can get I'm gonna mount it somewhere in this corner um, I don't know if it's gonna go over here over here But then this line from this valve cover will go right in and then that one will come over the top with all this stuff and go right in And it should be pretty simple 
easy to get to. Um, yep, so I'm going to get that going now. We'll get it mounted, get it routed, and I'll show you when it's finished. The catch can is in. We have our one hose coming over from that side. And we got this hose. I don't know how I'm going to route it yet, but it's just doing a big loop and going through there. So that is catch can. Next thing to do, get these fuel rolls pulled off. Pop the old injectors out and put the new ones in. So trying to get the injectors put in here, ran into a slight problem. These are the injectors out of the car. What I thought was an LM7 injector is actually a flex fuel injector, not the regular LM7 injector. And because of that, it is taller than the regular injectors. So this is what I thought was in the truck. This is your regular LM7 injector, same height. This is what's in there. So fuel rail is too tall. So what we need to do is find a regular fuel rail, swap it out with this one, moves these mounts up, brings the fuel rail down, and then the injectors will go in. So I gotta get looking for a fuel rail, and then we can go ahead and throw these injectors in. Okay, so we're back the next day. Uh, went ahead and found a set of fuel rails. They were on an engine that was sitting out in the sun, so they were completely like chalky, faded. So. We had some blue paint, threw that on there. Uh, I can show you the problem we were having now. If you look at, these are the ones that came out. These are the ones that, these are the new injectors on the new fuel rails. If we put them side by side, you can see how much longer the other injectors are compared to the new ones. So this injector, the way Chevy modified that to make these fit, so I guess these are flex fuel injectors, is they changed the mounting tab. So you can see that mounting tab and that mounting tab are different to change the height of the rail on the intake. But if we stand them both up next to each other here, straight, even though the injectors are different lengths, the mounting tabs are in the same spot. And I already went and put one on the car to verify that it fits. So we'll get this other one thrown on. Uh, we'll have our new injectors in. And then we'll get to putting the injector data in the computer. All right, fuel rails are in. There's the driver's side. There's the passenger side. Went ahead and pressurize the fuel system uh, no visible leaks so I think we're good to go there so I'm gonna go ahead and get the injector data put in in HP tuners write it to the PCM and go from there alright so I went ahead and put the injector data in uh, this is the Excel file provided from Deechworks that has all the injector data so basically we did the flow rate versus KPA uh, minimum injector pulse offset volts versus uh, VAC short pulse limit and short pulse adder that's all the data given from Deech works, so we'll go ahead and save that, uh, send it over to the PCM, and hopefully we can crank it up and see what it does. All right, so I'm fighting with this Mustang here, trying to get it to run right. Um, it keeps pulling timing, uh, and it's throwing a knock sensor code. So I went ahead and uh, ohmed out the knock sensors on the knock sensor harness that comes up from the intake, back of the intake manifold, and one's ohming out like 107K, and the other one is not reading at all. So we have a bad knock sensor. So what I'm doing right now, pulling off the wire harness, everything off the intake, pull the intake manifold out and figure out which of the two is bad. Uh, I have some spare ones and we'll put one in and see if it fixes that problem. Well, got the harness out. Not too bad. Lost some insulation on the wires there. Probably not the reason it wasn't working. The most likely reason it wasn't working is that is our knock sensor. There's the other one, and that is that knock sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a wild guess that this is the knock sensor that is not working. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull both these out, clean this up the best I can, and fix that wire harness up the best I can, put two new ones in and, and see what it does. But I'm gonna go ahead and say that guy is not doing too good. Um, I'm gonna silicone these covers when I put them back on. To try and keep water out because that is water getting inside there causing corrosion and all kinds of bad things all right so i got all the corrosion vacuumed out of the holes you can kind of see that one there went ahead and filled this one with pb blaster right here trying to get it to break free uh, i haven't tried to take them out but i don't think that one's gonna come out super easy just by the amount of corrosion that's in there so we'll let that one sit for a minute work on the front one and see if we can get these out. Well, got them out. Uh, the back one was a little bit of a struggle, but it did come free. You can see how corroded they are. Brittle, 
the connectors corroded inside. I mean, there's no way that was working right. This one was the one that was still working, uh, surprisingly. Here's the two new ones, not new, but uh, much better shape than the ones that came out. And these two both test fine. Uh, so we gotta clean these out, pretty crusty down in there. That one's hard to see, but we'll vacuum those out, blow them out, get them as clean as we can, put the new ones back in, fix the wire harness, and hopefully we should be okay after that. All right, new knock sensors are in, covers are on, wires are fixed. Went ahead and siliconed those covers back on to prevent water from getting in there again and causing the same issue. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this intake manifold back on and see if that fixes our problem. All right, so messing around with the tune here, uh, had a problem with the P1514 error, kept popping up. Uh, went ahead and cranked all of those values way up in that table to try and prevent that from happening. Um, we can go here, look at the spark tables. There's my high octane spark table and the low octane spark table. In boost, we're running a max of like 10, 10 to 12 degrees of timing, which is pretty safe even on the high octane table, high octane table. In boost, the maximum it sees is like 12 and a half degrees of timing, so that's pretty safe. Uh, mess with the VE table, this is what we have here so far. So adding a lot of fuel, bottom right is high RPM under boost. Um, up here on the top, kind of follows the stock Chevy values that were in the Suburban. Pulled those from the old tune, uh, tweaked them a little bit, but up here is mainly the stock stock VE table uh, and then when it gets under boost over 110 kPa here it adds in a whole bunch of fuel so that's pretty safe on the tune um, once again I also have no idea what I'm doing this is the first time I've ever done this this is what I've gathered we're gonna see how it runs hopefully it does pretty good um, another thing I'll mention is I went ahead and referenced some tunes from the uh, sloppy mechanics tune cabinet so you can look that up on Google they have a lot of tunes there you can see I wouldn't just copy them you know the goal is to understand um, that way you can create your own tune but it is good to reference and look at so like for example you can look at a compare we'll do spark and we can compare to this is a tune from the sloppy mechanics tune cabinet spark table this is my spark table it's different um, mine's probably not right either but it'll it'll be a continuous work in progress there so that's that's basically how I got started um, I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm learning as I go. Hopefully I don't blow it up, but uh, we'll see. So let's go take it for a rip around the block here and see what it does.